This is so much faster and so much easier to build stock up in your dehydrated pantry. Hey folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com. Today we are talking about dehydrating frozen corn. Yes, fresh corn is always best when you can do it, but this is so much faster and so much easier to build stock up in your dehydrated pantry stock that I'm gonna do a ton of dehydrated corn. Um, you may have seen this in my, my Aldi haul this past week that I picked up about 10, about 10 bags of frozen corn, 12 ounces per bag for 95 cents a bag. It's the fastest way I know to build a very big stockpile of dehydrated vegetables when you start them from frozen. Let's get started on the corn, shall we? Okay, I don't dehydrate fresh corn. I prefer to eat it fresh and I prefer to freeze it fresh. Um, I, don't, I don't even like to can it. Um, to me, fresh corn, when it's really good corn, needs to be eaten fresh and I don't bother dehydrating. What I do is buy frozen corn. The reason I want to do that to stock up on corn is that I can do so much so fast with frozen corn because I open the package, pour it out, and that's all there is to it. Since I don't grow my own corn, uh, and it is kind of hard to get really good corn here uh, for most of the year because most of the corn that's grown in our state is for cow feed, um, and you get a short, short time to get any kind of really good corn. And so we eat it fresh then because it's just, it's so much, it's just worth it. So um, I go ahead and just buy this because it's been already, all the work has been done for me. It's been blanched. It's been taken off the cobs. It's been processed for me. I don't have to do any of all, I don't have to do all that work. So this is how easy it is to dehydrate corn. Okay. Uh, especially if you're trying to do a bulk to have some in storage, this is all that has to happen. You open a package, you pour it onto your tray and you dry it at 125 until it's done. You do not have to thaw it. There's no point in thawing it because it will fall relatively quickly in your machine. Now my Kasori will not hold a whole bag of, this is a, let's see, this is a 12 ounce bag. And my Kasori won't hold quite a whole bag. And these bags were each about a dollar, 95 cents at Aldi this week. Um, but if you can get it on sale for cheaper than that, you know, that's when you can stock up and do this. But when I need bulk, then I'm gonna do it this way because it saves me so, so much time. So um, what I'm gonna be doing with this is that uh, I use it for soup. I can make cornmeal out of it. Um, I can also um, rehydrate this and make it. This is one of the few things I think that rehydrates well to make a, a, a side dish on its own. Um, I still will always wanna have something that's more fresh than that, but in a pinch, this will work. And it goes into casseroles, it goes into soups. Uh, one of my favorite things is is when I'm making shepherd's pie uh, or cottage pie, depending on the meat that I have, uh, pouring some extra corn in and already uh, when I'm putting mixed vegetables into it, um, I use those dehydrated as well. But when I, I like to put extra corn in it uh, and do it that way. And I go ahead and pile on this corn. It's kind of like an herb to me because it's going to shrink up so much that even though they're touching right now, they will shrink and they will give plenty of room uh, to dry. So well, let's get this finished. So here we go, 12, uh, 12, don't I wish. Um, six trays of frozen corn going in the dehydrator. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna go to 125. Sometimes I recommend that if you have frozen vegetables that you actually run it higher, like about 145 for the first two hours or so to let things thaw and then set it to the regular temperature that you would use to go ahead and dry it. But for me, this corn will thaw out fast on its own. It does, it's not so dense that it needs that extra time. So I'm just gonna set it at 125, uh, drop that down a little bit. Because I don't want, I'm gonna set it at 120. Actually, it's gonna take a little longer. So I am, Setting this, I don't care about the time. So I mean, you can see it's just automatically set at 35 hours. I don't care because I don't dry by the time. I dry by whether things are dry or not. This, it is, uh, let's see, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. This may be done by the time I go to bed tonight and I will start the second load. Uh, and if not, I will drop this down to 95 and then just let it run overnight and, and then start the second load in the morning. 
Okay, it is the next morning. I went ahead and just let them run overnight because they were almost done when I went to bed and I didn't want to stay up. So this is what they look like. I don't know if you can see that, but you can hear the sound of what is dried corn, okay? So I'm gonna do another set, but I just wanted to show you what they look like. You can hear the sound. I'm gonna put them in a jar for conditioning. So I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to load my next trays. Now the next trays I'm doing, okay, day two has semi-thawed um, corn because I had the extra bags just in my refrigerator. I didn't, I didn't have room in my freezer to put them in. So these will take a little less time. The, uh, the corn from last night that I did yesterday, that took about um, eight hours probably to be fully dry. It depends on your home's humidity. The machine that you have, how thawed these were, uh, how densely you pack them in the tray. So you're just going to have that window of time that it may take. So overnight is really what you, you know, if you put it on before you go to bed, when you wake up the next morning, they're probably dead. All right. So I'm going to load a second set of trays and put them in the machine. And we're going to do it just like we did the first time. Uh, 125 for six to 10 hours until they're dry. to show you something. We're just going to put this right in here. All right, so we have our leftovers from yesterday. Making all the noises. Okay, can't see this well. Let's see if we can do that. that. So this was approximately 100, did I say, uh, 11, 118 ounces of, um, of, of, of uh, frozen corn. Now we have it in a jar. It's a quart size, um, quart size jar. Now what I'm going to do is condition. So every day I'm going to come in here and, you know, if I was conditioning and then just toss it around to make sure that. When I turned it upside down, that I don't have a bunch sticking to the bottom from the pressure of all of this corn. Uh, if they're if they're still sort of wet, then they're going to stick to the top. And with corn, if you have any sticking, I would put it back in the dehydrator. This is not the same kind of sugared issue that you would have with uh, with maybe some fruits that when you turn it over and it sticks, and then you shake it and it comes off. Um, with corn, I know this is all sugar at this point, but corn should be so dry that it doesn't stick like that. Okay. <laughs> So after five or seven days, however long you decide you want to do it, you've got no sticking, then this is storage and ready to go. If you have sticking in this, then you'd want to redry it. If you start to see mold form anywhere, you have to toss it all because mold, while it will grow a colony here, has already put its tendrils down further into your food and just pulling a little bit out of the top doesn't mean that you not you don't have all that mold down the bottom. And mold can be problematic for so many people now, so you don't want to eat it. You want to so that's why you need to be really, really careful about making sure that you fully dried everything before you come into the conditioning phase. All right, so what do we do with corn? Right now, we're gonna powder it. And what is powdered corn? It's cornmeal. This is the stuff that you would normally use for cooking with. Now, most cornmeal is made from dent corn. Um, but if you're in a, an emergency situation where you need some cornmeal, yet you don't have any, uh, but you know you've got dried corn on the shelf because you know if you're like me, you keep a lot of dried fruit vegetables on the shelf all the time. You can make some quick cornmeal that can that can serve you well. So here we go. We're going to put it in. I'm going to use my uh, my future blender today. Um, you can use whatever you need to use. Um, if you're only going to have just a little bit, you can use your coffee grinder. If you want to make a lot of cornmeal, you can use a bigger blender. You're just going to want a, a pretty powerful one um, because this is going to take a little bit more to powder up than just regular things. Um, now, cornmeal goes from fine to coarse. You can grind it however you want, you know, polenta. Um, so here we, here we go. 
And just remember, when you're grinding, do not just push it down and let it go. One, it's going to ruin the motor in your machine. Two, it's going to create so much heat that things start to stick uh, and create um, issues with grinding. So you want to pulse, 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 then go ahead and do a, a straight grind. Now, I'm not going to be terribly worried about the grind on this because I'll just have this set aside for the next time I do, I don't know, something. Um, if I need it, I'll just tuck it away. So this is not the finest grind there is, but it's pretty close. This came out to, let's see, half a cup of, of uh, cornmeal. Now, if I ground this finer, because we're doing this based off volume, not by weight, uh, it would actually be a smaller volume because it will settle down even more. But you can see this really coarse grind that came in here. Let's see if we can get it in there. Um, there are still a few bits. This would... But that's really how you would do some emergency cornmeal if you needed to. Now, how long is this going to store? Recommended time to store dehydrated vegetables is 12 to 18 months because after that, things can start losing their texture, they can start losing their color, they start to lose their nutrients. But you're going to find that your corn, properly dried, conditioned, and stored in an airtight container, will last you for probably up to five years, depending on how much you need. So here's our corn. That's how you dehydrate corn. That's how you can make some quick cornmeal. And if you want to see how else I'm going to use this, click this video right here. Happy dehydrating.